Hello everybody and today in the Fintech Minutes Tech, we are delighted to welcome a dear friend but also one of the leaders of Fintech and Blockchain in Hong Kong, Mr. Charles Dossi. Uh, hi Charles, uh, welcome to Fintech Minutes Tech. Thank you for having me Mushi, good to be here. Look, last week was, uh, or the week before in fact, uh, when the Fintech week was exciting, we, had, we heard a lot of things about blockchain, decentralization. Uh, CBDCs, congratulations on consensus winning those amazing projects uh, for uh, CBDC research with Bank of Thailand and HKMA as well as uh, you know in other regions in uh, in the world right now I know we have a new report out from consensus on DeFi but before we talk about that report uh, I think it's the broader audience may want to understand what is this DeFi is it you know defining something or, or what are we talking about uh, and how is that gonna have a fundamental impact on financial services. So would you like to make a few comments on that, please? Sure, absolutely. So DeFi stands for Decentralized Finance. So it's essentially finance uh, practiced and, and research in a decentralized way uh, on blockchain networks. Uh, today, most of the DeFi is happening on Ethereum as the leading uh, smart contract and blockchain platform. And you find the different components of finance uh, also uh, appear in, uh, in DeFi. So you find people doing uh, lending, you find people doing uh, uh, market making, you find people doing all different kind of activities in finance, uh, but they do it with uh, digitally native uh, tokens representing value. Uh, and uh, they are researching different ways to automate things which are not automated in finance. So it's very much experimental today, but it's growing in, uh, in importance. And uh, I believe that uh, some components of this research and, and this experimentation of DeFi uh, will actually contribute to the finance we know uh, as today, uh, what we call CFI for centralized finance. Yeah. So I guess the, 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 limit, the, the separations between these two worlds will get, become more and more blurred yeah. and, uh, and DeFi will contribute with new, uh, with new, with new infrastructure. So that's uh, just imagine in, in other words, uh, DeFi uh, will be maybe something like maybe your HSBC account uh, being able to speak uh, directly with Revolut, being able to speak directly uh, with uh, your SoFi account or some other uh, Alipay account, and suddenly all these financial services uh, becomes connectable uh, in a very smooth manner and in, in a decentralized manner. So that would be a, a DeFi experience. Right. So I think that's a good point, right? Do we've been seeing on the other side, one side is the central bank digital currencies or CBDCs, where the central banks are entering into the blockchain world uh, or you know distributed ledger technology world uh, more specifically, and probably that's where we see monetary policy will be more controlled or more in, in uh, it's it's reducing the intermediaries and it's likely to be direct to central banks. And on the, on the other hand, you're seeing DeFi, which is uh, democratizing in some senses finance and you're in charge of your finance in the, that's the ideal state, right? So you said these two things are likely to blur, but uh, which of these two do you see accelerating in the next year or so? I think you will see more and more uh, of automated lending against collaterals. Uh, so with tokenization of assets, you can imagine that this token representing asset can be very easily uh, used as a collateral uh, for uh, any lending in any currency of your choice. So I think it's going to be very quickly uh, a reality for many of us. You can maybe expect that maybe the, the digital asset for mobile gaming or for some other type of digital asset will be used first as collaterals and later some more classic collaterals. Uh, so lending is, uh, I think, probably uh, uh, something which is coming, uh, coming fairly quick. And also the use of CBDCs, you might see the use of CBDCs in, uh, in kind of decentralized platforms. Uh, where uh, where the money coming from central banks will be also compatible in a way to some uh, in some other places where to spend it. Yes, I think interoperability I think is going to be a big factor going forward as well, right? As we see more CBDCs. Now you are you've been working for Consensus for almost two years now, Absolutely. right? Uh, uh, would you want to tell people a little bit about Consensus? Those who may not be aware, of course, Consensus is such a big name in the blockchain world and people know, but those who are in the financial services world. What is consensus and why is it uh, the talk of the town currently? Uh, absolutely. Consensus is the world's largest uh, blockchain engineering company on, on Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum ecosystem is the world's largest uh, blockchain ecosystem with more than uh, 350,000 developers. Uh, and consensus is five years old. Uh, so in, the, in, the, in an industry which is more or less five years old, it means we, we started uh, from day one in the industry. 
Uh, so we are very instrumental in, uh, in bringing tools to the developers as well as developing applications. So today the company is distributed uh, uh, around the world. Uh, the Hong Kong office is, uh, is uh, the hub for, for APAC. Uh, and uh, we focus on building protocols. Uh, that's one big part of, uh, of, our, of our focus. Another focus is to make uh, sure that blockchain gets consumable via API so that it can connect with existing systems so it can be easily uh, built, uh, built upon. Uh, and the third part is building tools uh, for the developers. So three main activities. And today we are servicing uh, uh, mostly the financial industry from central banks to stock exchanges, uh, banks, uh, stock brokers, uh, payment providers, uh, a multitude of, uh, of, uh, of practitioners are, are really looking at, uh, at uh, a global settlement network such as Ethereum. Yeah. to enable their, their stable coins or, 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 or distribution in general. I guess it's a good point, right, that we're seeing such big growth. You're seeing, you know, in five years, you've reached the stage. Uh, uh, you recently bought uh, Quorum from uh, JP Morgan as consensus, uh, which is JP Morgan's uh, blockchain system and coin, et cetera, that you develop for financial services. But one key element that we, we talk often about is uh, financial education, right? Even in the modern day regular finance, there's a lot of uh, lack of financial education for our end customers on something that may be complex and uh, regulators are paying a lot of attention to that. Mm -hmm. And your reports that are coming out, I think is a big part of that financial education, right? So I think they have come out with a bunch of reports uh, and this DeFi report that Consensus has come out with, I think is quite exciting. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about why Consensus is trying to drive more financial education and of course about the DeFi report itself. Sure. Education is very important because the technology is very new. Yeah. Uh, it has potentials which, uh, which, uh, which appear uh, and are, are, are kind of crafted by, uh, by the practitioners. Uh, so the, the, the technology is really a tool and uh, if you don't understand the tool, uh, you will not let every, uh, every developers or, or entrepreneurs make the best of it. So education is very important. And uh, the Ethereum ecosystem is also moving so fast and bringing new tools uh, and new concepts so fast that you have to keep uh, educating the developers and also the executives to make sure everyone keep, uh, keep updated. So we publish uh, a quarterly uh, DeFi report, which is really focusing on the, the biggest trend of the quarter. Uh, it's not an annual report, it's a quarterly report. So it gives you an idea of uh, how fast this ecosystem mm -hmm. is, uh, is growing. And if you look at the total lot value, so the total value of assets which are uh, in, um, in, uh, in the DeFi ecosystem today, it's, it's essentially growing by, uh, uh, by, by two uh, quarter to quarter almost. It's, uh, it's yeah. really a, a, very fast, uh, a very fast growing ecosystem. So our colleagues from uh, Consensus, uh, Everett Muzi, Tom Hay and James Beck, uh, I've been working on this Q3 uh, DeFi report and I really invite you to, to look at it. Uh, we deep dive into uh, auto, uh, auto market making. Uh, today there is market makers in capital market. This is a full, uh, full time job. There is teams, there is algorithm, uh, but there is also market making uh, uh, enabled by blockchain by a series of smart contracts. Uh, with liquidity mechanisms. So if you are in finance and technology, this is really where DeFi uh, brings together uh, uh, code engineers as well as financial engineers. And I think this is why the, the conversation and, and, and the output is so interesting because of the diversity of the, uh, of the people being involved with that. I'm just going to step one very quick question for maybe the audience's clarification. When we're talking about the auto market making, we're talking about regular equity stocks, fixed income bonds, regular markets, right? Or are we talking about crypto markets here? Only crypto markets. So okay. it's really within the DeFi market. Okay. So for example, uh, an automated market making uh, platform would be, for example, uh, platforms such as Uniswap or Balancers, okay. uh, which are this kind of decentralized exchange uh, where they are able to bring an asset and create a market making mechanism sure. for this asset. And what it brings as, a, as, a, as an opportunity is to bring liquidity mm. uh, to a liquid asset or digital assets, which are not so popular yet. Sure, sure. So market making is a, is, a, is, a, is a big trend. There is also a big trend around governance tokens mm. uh, as well as staking. Uh, this space is growing uh, and, and, uh, and maturing at a very fast pace and, and the, this Q3 uh, DeFi report by Consensus covers that. Uh, and then we've got these lending platforms. Uh, as I was mentioning, lending is a fairly straightforward mechanism sure. and it's very easy to apply lending uh, in the blockchain world with an escrow with different terms and conditions against you receiving some, uh, some digital asset. It can be a US dollar representation or it can be some other digital asset. So there is also a lot of 
maturity coming in the world of lending, and this covers in this report. So I really encourage you to, uh, to uh, download this report, study it, uh, register to the newsletter. You can go to consensus.net, but you should also step by, uh, stop by a Mushir LinkedIn account uh, <laughs> for all news about blockchain and, and probably uh, getting the report from there as well. Thank you so much, Charles, for taking your time to speak to us today. I know you have a very busy schedule. DeFi world is a very hectic and busy world, and uh, we, we, we uh, uh, had an honor talking to you, and we look forward to staying in touch. And thanks, everyone. Please go to consensus.net, or you can come to uh, Charles's LinkedIn account, uh, one of the key KOLs in fintech, to follow and understand more about fintech and blockchain. So thanks, and speak soon. Thank you.